Hello again. This week we discussed 1998's Can't Hardly Wait, the amusing if not grammatically incorrectly titled Ode to the Class of 98, Jankos and All. During the course of the movie, we see two fundamental things that ensnare Amanda and Preston together. Music, like that of Barry Manilow, Third Eye Blind, and uh, Smash Mouth, and Pop-Tarts. We'd be remiss if we did not bid a sincere rest in peace to Steve Harwell, but 90s music we are not here to discuss. Instead, we are discussing the all-American breakfast pastry, the Pop-Tart. Now, if you're like me, Pop-Tarts were pretty much a staple of your kid diet, and as an adult, not so much. I can't remember the last time I had a Pop-Tart, maybe in college, so that's that's been quite some time. But in the early 1960s, two titans of the breakfast industry Kellogg's and Post were in their own Cold War, so to speak, over breakfast table dominance. Kellogg's biggest competitor, Post, had invented a process for dehydrating food and enclosing it in foil to keep it fresh. But this initial purpose was for, wait for it, dog food. Well, so they announced their product ahead of an official market launch and readiness. So Kellogg swooped on in and cornered the market, so to speak. Now, Post's initial breakfast invention was called the Country Square, and it was designed to complement cold cereals rather than replace them. So, Kellogg's product, originally known as the Fruit Scone, was advertised by an animated anthropomagic toaster named Milton. And this product became so popular that Kellogg could not keep up with demand. Since most Americans at that time were not familiar with what a scone is, Kellogg's changed the name to Pop-Tart and this was due to the rising pop art movement at the time, so they thought that it would catch on with kids, and catch on with kids it did. And with that, the original Fab Four was released. We had strawberry, maple and cinnamon sugar, blueberry, and apple currants. And since, like the scone, not many Americans knew what a current was. That flavor was ultimately dropped. But times they were a change in indeed. We had walked to the moon, the artificial heart was invented in Houston, by the way, and finally, drum roll, Pop-Tarts got their iconic icing and sprinkles. Yes, consumers went an entire four years devouring Pop-Tarts without the beloved icing and sprinkly sprinkles atop their beloved pastry. And, and Pop-Tarts became so popular that the original box of eight Pop-Tarts, popularly known 12, then to 24. And God knows what Costco is doing with their Pop-Tart offerings. Love you, Costco. Hope to see a box of, I don't know, 200 Pop-Tarts the next time I shop your aisles. And then with the slacker culture of the 1990s, cereal became kind of a go-to de facto meal that was easy to prepare, easy to enjoy, and easy to clean up after. The next innovation was obvious, a Pop-Tart cereal. So, we love to discuss Seinfeld on the Real Relationships podcast. I wonder why Seinfeld never showed Jerry enjoying a wonderful bowl of Pop-Tart cereal. Now, ugh, breaks my heart. I never got the opportunity to enjoy Pop-Tart cereal. Thanks, Mom. 
But as an adult, I can now rectify that because in 2019, Kellogg's introduced that it was bringing back Pop-Tart cereal. So I think I'm gonna run to HEB and see if they have Pop-Tart cereal. I suggest you run to your nearest grocery store and see what they, they offer. In 2004, Pop-Tart's official motto of crazy good was introduced and like all things 2004 it became part of our lexicon and soon enough millennials were labeling anything as quote crazy good in 2010 a temporary pop tart store opened in new york city a pop tart pop-up if you will and this was open as part of just the general holiday season between thanksgiving and new year's eve and it was a rousing success and of course we love bringing things full circle on the real relationships podcast in june of 2021 jerry seinfeld announced that he was in production with netflix to bring unfrosted the true story of pop tarts and by all of my research this should be landing in netflix november 2023 so we've got about a week and a half left of november so if you don't see it on netflix now look for it soon and i hope for one that they show jerry enjoying pop tart cereal if not making some sort of vague observation about Pop-Tarts such as, well, what's the deal with Pop-Tarts? I mean, they're not even tart and modern toasters don't even pop the pastry out of the toaster. I mean, what is the deal? Am I wrong? I, that, that's my best Seinfeld. <laughs> Go ahead and take the foil wrapper off of that subscribe button so you never miss anything. Be sure to catch new episodes of the Real Relationships podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. New episodes drop like a Pop-Tart every Thursday. And of course, new episodes of our YouTube show also pop up every Thursday. We appreciate our listeners, our viewers, our supporters. Stay tuned for more great content from the Real Relationships Podcast. We thank you.